For more free African history resources, please go directly to our website or click the links below. Now, traditionally, the Fulani have an elaborate code for interacting among themselves and with other people. The code, known as Pulaku, decrees Simtanid, which means modesty, Munya, which means patience, and Hakilo, which means common sense. All of these virtues must be practiced in public, among one's in-laws, and with one's spouse. Islam, which most Fulani adhere to, which also requires modesty and reserve, has tended to reinforce this code. The Fulani society features the caste divisions typical of the West African region. The four major castes include the nobility, traders, tradesmen, and servants. Among the nomadic Fulani, women in their spare time make handicrafts, including engraved gourds, weavings, knitting, beautifully made covers for calabashes, known as mbidu, and baskets. The Fulani men are less involved in the production of crafts, such as pottery, ironworking, and dyeing. It is not uncommon to see the Fulani women decorate their hair with bead accessories, as well as cowrie shells. Fula women often use henna for hand, arm, and feet decorations. It is common for women and girls to have silver coins and amber attached to their braids. The women often wear many bracelets on their wrists. The women can also be seen wearing a colorful cloth around the waist, head, or over one shoulder. With the Fulani culture, the role of the men is to provide for their families. Marriage is conducted at an early age and facilitated by families and sometimes arranged. Many men marry in their early 20s, while women marry in their late teens. Traditional Fulani marriage is comprised of three stages. The first stage is the Sharu. The Sharu is the process of flogging whereby men are publicly flogged by other men to test for bravery, courage, strength, and discipline. The groom is not expected to cry, and if he does, he runs the risk of being rejected by the bride's family. This part of the process is not compulsory, but is implemented when appropriate. The second stage is the Kogal stage. This is the stage where the dowry and bride price are paid. Gifts are transferred from the groom to the bride and her family. The third stage is the Islamic wedding. After the marriage rites, the wife is accompanied to her husband's house and she is welcomed by the women. In terms of typical Fulani cuisine, much of it is derived from cattle and includes products like yogurt, milk, butter, and meat. Other staples include porridge, groundnuts, starches like sorghum, fonio, and corn. Another popular rice called niri is often eaten with leafy soups, also known as hako, which is made from onions, peppers, vegetables, and sun-dried root vegetable dishes. Another food eaten by the Fulani is fura, which is a millet dough ball, with fura meaning millet ball. It is often eaten in Niger and Ghana. The Fulani have a rich musical culture and play a variety of traditional instruments, including drums and a hoodoo, which is a plucked skin-covered lute similar to a banjo. Another instrument played is the riti, which is a one-stringed bowed instrument similar to a violin. Fulani music is as varied as its people. The numerous subgroups all maintain unique repertoires of music and dance. Songs and dances reflect traditional life and are specifically designed for each individual occasion. Music is played at many occasions such as when herding cattle, working in the field, or preparing food. Music is extremely important to the village life cycle with field cultivation, harvest, and winnowing of millet performed to the rhythm of the songs and drums. A common feature of all Fulani groups is their ability to read and write and to compose and or appreciate poetry and also their Islamic identity. The majority of the Fulani follow the religion of Islam and have done so since its original spread across Western Africa. As Muslims, the Fulani share with other Muslims 
a reliance on traditional Islamic religious practitioners and are themselves prominent members of the Islamic clerical class in Western Africa. However, the Fulani will frequent local religious practitioners who have established reputations for their curative powers and supernatural abilities. Fulani Muslims often practice Sufism, a form of Islamic mysticism that is prominent in West Africa and Sudan and around the world. Islamic practice among Fulani individuals ranges from moderate to conservative. The Fulani were also the creators of the Fula, or Fulani Jihads, sometimes called the Fulani Revolution, were a series of jihads that occurred across West Africa during the 18th and 19th centuries, led largely by the Muslim Fulani people. Jihad is an Arabic word which literally means striving or struggling, especially within a praiseworthy aim. The jihads were a series of reforms aimed to create Islamic states or caliphates across Western Africa. The reforms also aimed to further spread Islam across Western Africa, counter social political problems, including underpopulation and shortage of goods such as food and water, and also were employed to put an end to European invasion into the continent of Africa. On developing a stable economy to finance development and bring prosperity to the population, some caliphates were largely successful. Overall, the teaching and spreading of Islam across the area was a largely successful endeavor. For example, under the Fulani ruled Sokoto Caliphate, large amounts of Islamic literature were printed and widely distributed. This literature not only made available to elite men, but also was spread to other groups within society, such as women, servants, and the uneducated. One of the largest ethnic groups in the world, the Fulani represent a diverse and widespread group of people spanning across West, Central, and parts of East Africa to the present day. Thank you.